Meanwhile, we have a digital wellness expert, author of a book released last year called Courage to Connect, Stories that Encourage Meaningful Connection in Your Life. Mark Ostash is here on a mission to help professionals, teams, leaders connect with themselves and each other. And uh, we are all ears for that, as well as the ways that you have to protect digital health during the national fatigue we're all going through right now. Mark, welcome to the Paul W. Smith Show. Paul W., thanks for having me. How are you today? I am excellent. Uh, Congratulations again and again for being on the Cranes Detroit Business 20 in their 20s and Oakland County's 40 under 40s. You've had a lot of experience and a lot of success, and I appreciate you sharing it with us. Where do we begin, with the uh, courage to connect or with the ways to protect our digital health during this well, uh, fatiguing time? Well, I think they're, they're related. Let's start by just defining what digital wellness is. And as, it's, uh, as you think about your entire wellness, your digital wellness is looking at the, the calories you consume online through the content you watch through Netflix or through social media or your news headlines and how that impacts your mind, body, and spirit, and most importantly, how it impacts your relationships. Well, and, and it can, frankly, can be a very negative uh, uh, impact on our relationships. You know, we have a tendency to, a lot of people now are not uh, standing up straight and looking people in the eyes because they're so busy looking at their phone while they're talking to people, which is kind of sad and unfortunate, and uh, we have to work on some of that. I uh, maybe some people need to take a break from social media altogether. You know, I feel like uh, if you're going to take a break from social media, you don't necessarily need to announce it to the world. You just need to give yourself some space and some rest to uh, carve out some time to invest in other things like hobbies or habits that bring you true rest and restoration, uh, as well as an opportunity to invest in uh, yourself and the relationships around you if you're feeling like, you're spending too much time with your friends and followers and not enough time with the people around you. Mark, tell us, uh, I know you're on a mission to teach people healthy digital habits so they can improve their digital wellness and, and create those deeper connections you've talked about with things in life that matter most. Why don't you give us three, four, maybe five ways that we can improve our digital health? Will do. So if you think about the first half an hour of your day or the last half an hour of your day, your brain is literally like a sponge and whatever you're consuming, you're going to then rinse out. So let's say in the mornings, Paul W, you start by just uh, checking your email in bed. There's a good chance that you're going to feel what's known as doom scrolling when you're just kind of checking your, <laughs> your, your, your next email that needs a response or the headline that's got you feeling anxious and you haven't even brushed your teeth or gone to the bathroom. So I'd encourage folks to step into something a little bit more meaningful in an analog way, whether it's, uh, journaling, uh, devotionals, scripture, whatever kind of fits your worldview. Spend time, uh, even if it's 10 minutes, just by yourself reflecting on things that are good, things that you have around you um, that you want to give appreciation towards, and then go grab your cup of coffee and check your email. No digital gadgets at mealtime. Sleep device-free. Get a real alarm clock. I use my phone as my alarm clock. That's wrong, huh? I, it is. It is. Mostly everybody does. And if you think about how when your alarm goes off, you hit snooze, and then you see the notifications, and then the cycle continues. So if you can create some space, there's uh, something that I like to encourage people to do. It's called taking the broccoli test. And if you think about, if you're, Paul W., are, do you happen to be an emotional eater late at night by chance? I might be. There okay, might have well, been occasions when that's happened. All right. Well, maybe you and I. Uh, both also have a common ground with dark chocolate. But whatever your fancy is, a sugary cereal, uh, potato chips, when you're feeling the need to emotionally eat, um, it's been said that if you hold the picture of broccoli in your mind, you can ask yourself, am I really hungry enough right now to eat broccoli? And if the answer is yes, then you can continue snacking or eating. If the answer is no, then you're probably just emotional eating. So what I encourage people to do is to download a picture of broccoli, put it as their lock screen on their phone, and when you, when you go to impulsively check the news or your email and you see that broccoli, just ask yourself, Paul W., do I really need a check right now or am I just emotionally checking on the impulse? Oh One of your best tips, frankly, Mark, is to go on outside, get some fresh air, even if it means just taking a little extra time when you go out and get the mail. Yes, the, uh, the, the, the book that I wrote, Courage to Connect, is all about meaningful connections. And I think um, the most meaningful connection starts with yourself. 
and our 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 fresh air and the air we breathe is an unlimited resource that we have at our disposal and giving thanks and appreciation, even when we're quarantined, even when we're feeling like we can't go out to our normal rhythms and routines, fresh air and nature is out there for us to take advantage of. So when you're feeling like you have Zoom, Zoom fatigue from too many Zoom meetings in a row, when you're feeling like you're uh, digitally, screw, uh, uh, digitally uh, Zoomed out, just get outside and get some fresh air. Courage to connect stories that encourage meaningful connections in your life by Mark Ostash, O-S-T-A-C-H, Mark's last name, O-S-T-A-C-H, Ostash. And uh, and God bless you for all of this and what you're doing. And finally, I'm sure there are some companies. Uh, you've done a lot of work with organizations like DTE, Quicken Loans, MEDC, etc. How do companies reach out and find you? Yeah, so if, if any companies are looking for virtual event engagement, uh, the work I do on creating a culture of digital well-being, uh, is a great place to start. So you can reach me at markostash.com. Again, that's M-A-R-K-O-S-T-A-C-H.com, and I'd be happy to share how I can help. Very good. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for helping us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Paul W. 